singles and platinum albums as well as starring in a successful TV series and movie but what happened when the S Club party was over he's ready to bring it all back with his solo material one seventh of S Club it's John Lee. Hi. Hey, how Hi. are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Good, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for joining us today, John. My pleasure, thanks Looking for having me. Looking very well. Thank you very much. Now, it's been over 11 years since S Club God. said goodbye. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's a, that's it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, now you're about to release your own solo material. So what's it like going in the studio alone and recording stuff? It was great. It was, I recorded the album last year, and it's, it's basically an album of some of my favourite songs. So it's like a covers album. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to do just a straight sort of karaoke album um, so it's songs that you will know and love but I've done my own version of, Reworked of them. yeah exactly so um, they sound very very different from the way that you've heard them before oh nice so the album is called Fallen Angel what can you tell us about it originally it was going to be the idea came because I work in musical theatre yeah. it was going to be a musical theatre album um, but I'm in Jersey Boys at the moment mm -hmm. and so that's where Fallen Angel comes from so there's a couple of tracks from the show of Jersey Boys and um, because it, that's a kind of pop show pop rock show mm. I decided to do all kind of pop rock kind of songs instead so in, instead of doing the whole musical theatre thing. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of George Michael on there, nice. a bit of Carpenters, a bit of Frankie Valli, you know, it's kind of across the board. It's You've nice. got to have Frankie Valli in Frankie there. Valley You've on got there, to. Yeah. <laughs> now, why did you uh, leave us waiting so long for this album? It seems like a lifetime. It just, it just was the right time for me to do it. I mean, vocally, I'm in the best place I've ever been. I'm, uh, you know, very, very happy. I've always been busy with musical theatre. I was in Les Miserables for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and I've been in Jersey Boys now for three years. And like I say, it was never kind of something that was on the top of my list to do. Um, but the idea was brought to me to do this musical theatre album and then we kind of adapted it into a kind of pop rock album instead. Cool. Now, since S Club Split, you mentioned you've had a hugely successful career in the West End, but we read that one of your first roles was actually when you were 12 years old in a production of Oliver at London's Palladium. Is that where your showbiz passion was born? It was, yeah. I mean, I started out when I was probably 10 or 11 wow. doing, um, like, amateur dramatics. I grew up in Devon and we did Amdram down there. And I played Oliver at the local cinema. They took the screen down and I performed up on the stage. And uh, we saw an advert on TV that Cameron McIntosh was doing the production of Oliver in London. And they said to me, well, you can do it down here. Do you want to go up to London and try it up there? So my mum and dad drove me four hours and I queued wow. up in the street with 400, uh, God knows how many other kids, and uh, got the job. And that was it. I moved to London, went to stage school and never looked back. Wow, that's crazy at such yeah. a young age know, to just yeah. get up and go and do it. I know it. I haven't stopped, that's why I've knackered. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good, so it's <laughs> fine. It hasn't aged you just, just yet. Just keep pulling it back. <laughs> Now, Tom from McFly also starred in Oliver when he was younger. I went was to school with Tom. No! Yeah. So was he around when yeah, you were Johnny Oliver? Yeah, I went to, he was in the year, year below me. He, he was in the same cast as me, I think, when I was Oliver, and he was one of the workhouse boys, and then he stepped up and took over Oliver when I left. Oh, but wow. we were both in the... I think he was the year below me at school, yeah. Uh, how funny how things work out. I know, with Sylvia's, it was like, you know, a breeding ground for, like, yeah, stars and stuff. Yeah, because Matt like, Willis was there, yeah, was Amy Winehouse. Yeah, Matt Willis was there, Amy Winehouse was there, you know, there's loads of... Billy Piper. Vanessa from the Saturdays, I believe, was from yeah, there. Yeah, she went there. I think she went to summer school there or Saturday school or something, yeah. Oh. So quite a few of us have popped out of yeah. Sylvia's. Yeah. Great school to be at. Yeah. You recently starred in the award-winning musical Les Miserables, as well as currently playing Frankie Valli in Jersey Boys. So what's that been like? Because the West End is somewhere that everyone dreams to go and perform. It's amazing, yeah. I mean, I, I, like I said, I trained in musical theatre, so yeah. it was always my dream, and S Club kind of took me off on a very different track. Um, so it was a very natural path for me to go back to that when S Club finished. Um, I think I was the youngest Marius at the time when I went back into it, because S Club finished, I had a week off, and then started in rehearsals for Les Mis, so I think I was only 21 or 22 at the time. 21, I think it was. Wow. Um, so yeah, I did that for the 18th anniversary, I went back into the 21st anniversary, and I was also involved in the 25th anniversary at the O2 Arena. 
Um, and I've been doing Frankie Valley in Jersey Boys for the last three years now. So I've been busy boys. Stop. Now, I busy recently uh, went along to see Jersey Boys, see you perform, and you were, oh, you blew my mind, John. You were absolutely <laughs> incredible. What's it like performing that like day after day with the vocals as well? Because, I don't know, in S Club, I didn't really... You sung, but I didn't really know you had a voice like you do on stage. Yeah, no, it's a completely different um, technique, I guess, yeah. you know, and a completely different stamina to kind of keep yourself going. You know, I sing solidly for two yeah. hours, you know, and it's it's all right up there and, you know, up in your falsetto yeah. voice, so it's really, really high. Um, but it's great, I love it. There's some, you get such a rush out of being on stage in front of a live audience, you know, and I get to do that every single day, it's amazing. Great job to have. How long are you playing Frankie Valley for? Do you know? Is it sort of to be continued? It will be my third year in March, and I'm I'm actually leaving in March. Like, really? cause, yeah, because I'm three years is kind of my limit, and I want to still leave while I really enjoy it as well. Because there's nothing worse than going into work and thinking, God, I can't believe I've got to do this show yeah. again. You know, and it's not fair to the people that have paid, you know, sixty pounds for a ticket to come and see you as well. So, I'm um, I'm leaving while I still absolutely love it. Going off on a high. Do you know Absolutely, where you want to go yeah. next? I have no idea. No. I have no idea. The door's open at the moment, so um, I'm excited to see what happens this year, to be honest. Have you got any other musicals in mind that you'd love to go and perform at? There's nothing around at the moment. Um, I mean, I think in years to come, I would love to go back and do Les Miserables again as Jean Valjean. Uh, but I need to get a bit bigger for that. I'm a bit <laughs> older. I'm a bit too young for that at the minute. That's fine, do it later on. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah that's just all right. Age me up a bit. It's all right. <laughs> now, before we move on and talk about S Club, let's pause and check out your solo video. Now, it's called My Father's Son, which was originally a 90s hit for Connor Reeves. Were you a fan of the original? Such a massive a fan. Huge fan of Connor Reeves. And he yeah. only did the one album. He had this amazing album, Earthbound. And then he sort of disappeared. Yeah. And I was gutted because he had the most incredible voice. And all the songs, I'd still listen to it now. It's such a fantastic album. Um, and the guy that actually wrote, co-wrote this, um, he was like a Grammy award-winning guy, and he actually heard this version, um, and he really, really liked it, and gave oh, us our, wow. gave us his blessing for me to go forward and and, uh, and go with it. So it was really cool. S Club Seven are pop legends. People still love them. I still love them. Is it the same for you, or do you cringe looking back? Oh no, I don't cringe at all. Yeah. No, absolutely not. No, I'm, I'm dead proud of everything that happened that we did. You know, it was brilliant. I was, you know, 16 years old when it started, and I got to travel all over the world singing and dancing on stage, which is what I love to do. So it was brilliant. Great answer. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Cool. <laughs> now, as you mentioned, you were 16 years old when you first got in the band. How did the opportunity come around? It was literally an audition. I was just taking my GCSEs at the time. Um, and there's an industry paper called The Stage Newspaper. Yeah. And I was looking at the back of that for um, uh, colleges to go to, to apply to. And uh, I saw an ad for a pop group. And I thought, oh, I'll just go for that. And that was it. <laughs> Literally, I got, we did like six auditions and, and got it. And it said, oh, it's going to be Simon Fuller, the guy that put the Spice Girls together. And originally it said there was a boy group and a girl group. And then I think they merged, merged together. them together. And it took us about nine months, nine, ten months to find all seven of us. And then they flew us out to Miami and recorded a TV series. It was crazy. It's absolutely mental. And like, my life changed completely from that day. I bet you were like, what the hell is going on right yeah. now? I was trying to explain it to your parents when you were, I was only 15 at <laughs> yeah. the time. I was like, I'm going to be in a pop group. They're like, really? It's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to Miami. Don't worry. I'll be yeah. back. Yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Yeah. What was the whole audition process like? Was it quite gruelling? Was it hard or not really? It's not like uh, this was before the days of you know, reality TV, mm. you know, the pop stars and all that kind of stuff, yeah. when you see them being grilled on TV and stuff. It wasn't like that. It was just like a very basic audition. You go in and you sang in front of a panel. If they liked you, they called you back. Um, but there was literally maybe, you know, 4,000 people that auditioned. Um, and not only just in, in this country, I think they auditioned people in Spain and no. other places as well. So it was tough, but, you know, they got all seven of us in, uh, seven of us in the end. Now, you guys release so many pop classics, Reach, S Club Party, Don't Stop Moving, and Bring It All Back, just to name four. But what was your favourite S Club song? Uh, actually, there was a couple that weren't actually released. There was one called Bring the House Down, which was on, I think it was on our second album or third album, which is a, it's a really cheesy pop song, but it's really, really cool. I really like it. It's really fun. Um, I, I think we did that one on our first tour, and that used to, you know, people used to go nuts for that. Yeah. Um, but for our singles, I think. Don't Stop Moving has to take Even first now, place. Though, yeah, I it's hear a classic that and I'm track. Like, yes. Yeah, it's got that Billie Jean sort of yeah, baseline vibe going through it, so it's nice, it's good. Yeah, it's a really good track. Now, how would you describe the time when you're at the peak of your S Club success and releasing those huge pop singles and smash albums? It's, it's crazy when you're in it because, like I said, from the day we sort of were told we were in the band and they flew us out to Miami, 
you're in this sort of bubble and yeah. you don't really know the effect that it's having on the world around you because you're kept away from it. It's not until it finishes and you step out of it and look back and go, oh my God, that was insane. Yeah. Um, and you know, you, you have time to actually think about what you've done because when you're in it, you're thinking about what you're doing next. Uh -huh. Okay. So you don't really have time to appreciate what's going on. So it's not until now that I kind of look back and go, wow, that was mental. That was a good yeah, time. Yeah. Did you actually get any time to enjoy your success? The number ones, the albums, the TV series, the movie? Did you ever get a moment to go, hang on a minute? No. No. <laughs> no. It was literally, we'd be filming the movie and while we were filming the movie, we were planning the tour and we'd go, you know, go to the premiere of the movie and then get straight in a bus and they'd take us on a plane and go somewhere to do a gig, you know what I mean? So it was, we never had time to really sit down and appreciate what was going on. When you did have a day off, did you just sleep? <laughs> Pretty much. I think the only time we... Well, we, was, we was much younger back then, so we didn't need as much sleep, but, um, like, on aeroplanes, that was our that main... That was your downtime. Our main, our main sleep time. And yeah. in dressing rooms and stuff, you would find some of us, like, Hannah would be underneath a table... No. ...and Tina would be laying across a bench somewhere, <laughs> like, literally just seven people sprawled out, just completely out of it. Cogged out. Yeah. Jesus. Um, now, S Club wasn't just a pop group, it was a brand. You had your own TV shows and film, C and Double. Was it easy combining singing and acting? Uh, yeah, it was, because we were kind of playing ourselves, you know, kind of camped up versions of ourselves anyway. Um, and yeah, it was just fun. I mean, we, we worked with the writers a lot, so they kind of got bits of our personality and stuff, so it was easier for them to write for us. Um, but it was just silly and it was fun, you know, and we really enjoyed it, so it was great. And we were in the sunshine, you know, how can you moan about that? Being Miami three months seven. in Los Angeles oh, and three cool. months in Miami and three months in Barcelona, you yeah. know. It's, can't really complain, to be honest. What about <laughs> and learning... we got paid for it yeah, as well. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, what about learning lines? Because obviously you're singing your own songs, but you've got to learn lines. Was that quite difficult or not really? Some of us were yeah. better than others. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say, Bradley. <laughs> shocking. But, oh, no. Absolutely no. shocking, yeah. What Terrible. did you do in the end? Did you just say, right, ad-lib, just don't bother learning anything? I used to just ad-lib anyway. Really? He'd kind of get the gist of what he needed to say and then just sort of and that was it. ramble on. No one would understand a word he said anyway, so it was fine. Now, starting out on stage, did the acting career excite you more than the singing? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's something about getting up on stage and pretending to be someone else for a couple of hours yeah. that really excites me. I, I quite like that. Um, Although the Escort thing was great, you had, you know, six mates around you and, you know, you're up on stage being yourselves and we'd have a great laugh. But what I do now when you stand up on stage and pretend to be someone else for two hours and get out of your own headspace for a few hours, it's, it's quite therapeutic, actually. Yeah. It's really good. Now, when Paul Catamol left the group, the band dropped from Seven to become S Club. Were you worried at the time that uh, your time in Planet Pop was kind of over? Yeah, I mean, P Paul was very adamant that he wanted to go. Um, and, you know, we 100% supported him mm. in, in his decision. And we all talked about it as well, saying, is this the right time for us all to call it a day? And we just weren't ready yet. You know, the six of us, we still had lots of things that we want to do. And I think we did another tour, another album and, and the movie and all that kind of stuff afterwards. So. It, we just, it wasn't the right time for us to, to call it a day, so we carried on, I think, for about another year and a half well, after Paul went. That's a, still a great time to carry on and do it, because normally when band members leave, it kind of... Yeah, to be honest, I think that's, that's the handy thing about having seven. If one kind of pops off, you don't really notice. Still six, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. still fine to yeah, carry on. Yeah. Um, now, the band finally called it quits in 2003. Did you see that come in? Yeah, it was all of our decisions. Like, after about a year after Paul left... Um, we had the movie that we had planned, we had one more tour that we had planned, so we decided that once we'd finished those, we had sort of a six month countdown that we knew we weren't going to take any more bookings after sort of six months. So it was, it was really strange after something that's been a part of your life every single day, 24 hours a day for five or six years, to kind of know that it's coming to an end, you know, and you literally, you felt it like ticking down and we did our final gig um, at GOY Astoria, which isn't even here anymore, they've knocked it down. Um, that's how old we are. <laughs> um, but yeah, knowing that that was our final gig and we all went, right, that was it then, bye then. Oh Got in our cars no. and went home. It was really strange, yeah. Was it quite an emotional night for you all? Yeah, it was. It was a little bit, yeah. Because yeah. there was one of our first gigs that we ever did was at GOY and it was one of our, it was our last yeah. one as well. So it was, it was pretty cool. Ending it on a high. Yeah. Are you still in contact with any of the band nowadays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We all met up uh, last year, I think we all got together. But it's, it's, I mean, I see like Hannah and Tina every now and again, but trying to get seven people in, in one room is a nightmare. Yeah. So, really uh, yeah, um, we, we did all get together last year, though. 
And what was it like being back together? Was it strange or was it like old times? It was, it was once, it was something I was kind of a bit apprehensive about because yeah. I was like, is it going to be weird? Are we still going to get on after all this time has passed? And, you know, it was after sort of the kind of polite hellos and like, oh, hi, how are you doing? We kind of <laughs> slipped into this routine of how we all used to be. And it was, it was kind of weird, you know, kind of going back in time almost. But yeah, we, we love each other to bits, you know, we're all good people. You grew up together, so you're yeah. always going to be like yeah, yeah, yeah. A like brother and sister sort yeah, of exactly. thing. Yeah, you know? um, exactly. Now it was reported a few years back that S Club were getting back together, but nothing came of it. So what was the story there? There's been rumours have been going around since the day we split up. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> For like the Stay last after. ten years, when literally. Are they yeah. Back? <laughs> um, and it's something that we have talked about, you know. But it's, again, it has to be something that's right for yeah. all seven of us. And um, again, getting seven people's schedules. In, in line is it takes a lot of planning. Now, Eagle Eye Steph, as you know, I don't miss a trick, <laughs> um, was spying on Twitter and I saw loads of you tweeting all in one. Like, it got me very excited. So is this a potential good sign that there may be something on the horizon? It or are was... you just literally talking on Twitter and I'm just <laughs> no, jumping to conclusions? To be honest, sir, I think we all kind of, I think Hannah said something, I think Paul said something and tagged us all in, then Hannah said something, and then we all just thought, oh, sorry, we started winding everyone up. And the amount of responses <laughs> we get from people, <laughs> like from, I apologize to everyone who, you know, was like tweeting us back, but, um, yeah, we, we kind of did have a little bit of a wind up. But like I say, it's, it's definitely something that we are thinking yeah. about. It's definitely on the cards. Oh, that's exciting. Now, Joe, Bradley and Paul have been touring as S Club 3. How did you feel about that? Um, would you have jumped on board and joined in with them? Uh, no, like when S Club finished for me, that yeah. was when it finished. Yeah. And if we do a reunion, like that will be it. Um, but it's kind of, like I said, I've been so busy in between doing my own bits and pieces yeah. that, uh, you know, I've not been able to kind of go back and become S Club 4. <laughs> Well, John, my fingers are crossed for that potential reunion. I'm going to lock myself away and learn all of the S Club dance routines ready for that gig when you come back. Fantastic. And I'll teach you the moves. Yeah, because I can't remember them. There it's we go. It's a very, very long time ago. So we can relive this moment together. Good times. Yeah? Yeah. S Club. Yeah. I remember that bit. Yeah! yeah. In the yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all day so you do not. Well, John, thank you so much for talking to us today. A pleasure. And good luck with the rest of this year. Thank you. When the world leaves your feet.